This call is now being recorded. It's very good morning, everyone. In the previous few classes, we have been uh, discussing about the conventional electronic tubes, uh, namely vacuum tubes and their working. And we had also discussed the limitations posed by uh, these uh, electronic tubes, particularly when operated in microwave frequencies. And uh, that led to the uh, evolution or discovery of microwave tubes. So let me quickly uh, glance through what we have discussed in the last few classes. And then today we will well deep into uh, the operation of uh, reflex klystron tube because it is also part of your uh, lab experiment okay so these are the contents we will be discussing about the limitations of uh, the conventional tubes and then we will look into reflex klystron tube okay so when we talk about uh, electromagnetic spectrum our focus is now uh, on microwave frequencies that is uh, in the frequency range of 10 power 8 to 10 power 12 uh, hertz and uh, the reason why we go for microwave frequencies is because uh, uh, it helps us in achieving larger bandwidth the power required will be relatively low uh, when we go for microwave as compared to uh, relatively lower frequencies and we will have uh, better directive properties less fading and uh, the signal becomes more reliable right and these are some of the applications of uh, microwave uh, systems right and here we are talking about the conventional electronic tubes the conventional electronic tubes looked like this which were used a few decades ago which were mostly famous in the uh, 1950s and 1960s so used in uh, tv and radios even now in some academic academic institutions and in some uh, organizations or electronic manufacturing industries they keep these uh, tubes to understand the evolution of uh, electronics and uh, here uh, uh, the vacuum tubes uh, were used to perform the same operation uh, as that of a diode or a transistor right that we uh, discuss nowadays and uh, with the help of a few uh, videos and animations had uh, explained the working of this uh, uh, vacuum tube on how it can be used as a switch and how it can be used as an amplifier so this is the video that uh, had played uh, maybe a couple of classes ago just to help you understand how a particular vacuum tube is uh, uh, moving electrons are moving inside a particular vacuum tube right and we also saw the animation of this triode this triode basically consists of uh, uh, cathode anode and uh, grid the reason why i'm stressing on this part today is because we will be uh, discussing the impact of accelerating grid in the case of reflex klystron tube so uh, here if, if uh, you could you could recall i told you that a triode has uh, three uh, terminals cathode anode and grid and uh, if i give very high frequency to grid then the electrons will not be uh, uh, fast enough to move from cathode to anode and that leads to reduction in the speed of operation right so and we had also discussed about three most important uh, yeah, limitations of uh, conventional electronic tubes namely inter electrode capacitance uh, which leads to shorting of the signal lead inductance and transit time so uh, this is the uh, diagram that I, that, I that I should have in the absence of parasitics but in the presence of parasitics you can see uh, there is capacitance between uh, grid and plate there is capacitance between uh, uh, grid and cathode there is capacitance between anode and cathode right so these capacitance uh, will uh, pose massive challenge when uh, the input frequency is particularly greater than 1 gigahertz. Similarly, uh, whenever we connect wire to these devices, uh, the looping of the wire creates uh, inductance across each of the terminals and these inductances also pose massive challenge. We had understood the working of the, each of these limitations uh, in detail 
when I consider internal electrode capacitance, you know that Xc is equal to 1 by uh, omega r, 1 by 2 pi f. So as frequency increases, as frequency increases, what will happen to Xc? It becomes uh, infinity. Uh, that means Xc becomes uh, 0. When Xc becomes 0, what will happen is the capacitors across the, to these terminals will be shorted. So that leads to loss of uh, signal. Similarly, when I consider inductance at high frequency, the inductance increases. When the inductance increases, so the inductive uh, impedance will uh, pose massive uh, challenge for the signal coming in here. That means if I consider this as say point A and here this as point B, the voltage at point B will be much lesser than at point A. Thus, the voltage that is actually going inside this particular uh, device will be much lesser than what we would have otherwise desired. So that is the problem with inductance. Then the third problem is uh, transit time. That is the time taken for the electrons to move from cathode to anode is much more than the time uh, uh, associated with the signal connected to the grid. And this leads to reduction in the frequency of the operation and thereby reduction in the efficiency because of the losses in the power in the dissipation uh, uh, process right so that's about the three important limitations to overcome this this is what is shown here or said here so at high frequencies the uh, at low frequencies the time taken uh, by the uh, electrons to move from cathode to anode does not pose any hindrance in its performance but at high frequencies definitely there will be a massive challenge uh, for the movement of electrons that leads to reduction in the speed of operation so the solution is microwave tubes uh, which helps to overcome the problem and these microwave tubes as i've already told you in the previous class are used in the radar system so there's a radar system application so a couple of applications one is in aerospace another is in military it is also used uh, for detection of stealth technology etc and this is the uh, diagram showing the application of clistron tube so this is the clistron microwave tube you can see it is used as transmitter as well as receiver and these clistron tubes are used for powering up the parabolic reflector antennas or radar antennas you can see this is the parabolic reflector antenna this is the parabolic reflector and this is the feed antenna right so our focus is on reflex clistron tube used as a oscillator okay now this is this was the early variant of reflex clistron uh, tube now this is the latest one and its operating frequency ranges from 1 to 25 gigahertz depending on the type of variant you are taking and it is a low power oscillator and low efficiency oscillator and the operation of this micro clistron tube depends on the uh, concept of velocity modulation so all of you please pay attention and listen carefully if you look at the diagram here the electric field is in this direction that is from right to left and the potential is connected are uh, negative here and positive here therefore the electron moves from left to right because of the attraction or acceleration right so potential is negative here this is positive here so electron will move from left to right so this is considered as acceleration right now in this diagram you can see the electric field has changed its direction from left to right and look at the polarity it is positive here and here it is negative now what will happen to the electron and uh, the potential connected here both are of same type or same charge so definitely there will be repulsion and that leads to the acceleration right so this process of acceleration and deacceleration of electrons is referred to as velocity modulation of electrons right and we are uh, trying to overcome the drawbacks of conventional microwave uh, my, uh, conventional electronic tubes in the microwave tubes using this concept of electron velocity modulation and here basically we are producing rf oscillations by using dc power okay so let us understand this uh, in detail now when i talk about clistron tubes there can be uh, two broad categories reflex clistron and multi cavity clistron reflex clistron is used as uh, oscillator low power microwave oscillator and uh, multi cavity clistron is used as low power microwave amplifier right and uh, here it can be we can have two cavity or more than two cavity clistron 
Now let us uh, focus on reflex klystron oscillator. This reflex klystron oscillator is a single cavity klystron and it, uh, it is capable of producing power in terms of uh, in the range of uh, 10 to 500 milli watt and its frequency range uh, is from 1 to 25 gigahertz and most importantly efficiency is 20 to 30 percent okay and it is mostly used for laboratory experiments and uh, in the or it was used in the early uh, radar systems okay <clears throat> now if we look at the uh, schematic diagram a uh, geometry of the reflex resistant tube uh, these are the components we will have so please pay attention and listen carefully here we will have a uh, cathode which is uh, the filament or the heater which will inject the electrons and then on the other side we will have repeller this repeller is connected with negative voltage right and here this is the resonator cavity this is the cavity that will hold the electrons and then it is pulled out using pickup loop right and here this cavity is connected with the positive voltage this cavity is connected with the positive voltage right so this is the uh, diagram of uh, the reflex another diagram of reflex klystron tube uh, now let us understand the working of this klystron tube okay in detail in the previous class i had uh, told you just the movement of electrons and the reflection of electrons and then bunching of electrons and then taking it out now let us dwell deep and understand what are the three types of electrons and which electron will encounter massive repulsion and which will have uh, lesser repulsion right so uh, this is the cathode or the filament or the heater and here we have uh, anode or the accelerating anode you can see cathode is connected with negative voltage and then this is the rippler rippler is connected with again negative voltage and this is the cavity right and here there is a gap in the cavity that gap is uh, referred to as d so you can see this gap is the distance in the cavity for the electrons to go in right and here uh, the rf field uh, uh, is alternating so it is represented by vs so with respect to vs we will analyze the movement of electrons with respect to this vs which is the rf field uh, which is alternating in nature we will analyze the movement of electrons okay so all of you please pay attention and listen carefully now as soon as i uh, power up the uh, cathode right so when i power up the cathode and uh, rippler is given with the negative voltage the electrons will start to move in this direction and if i give appropriate voltage to the anode if I give appropriate voltage to the anode, the electrons will be accelerated and they will move in the forward direction like this. Okay, they will move in the forward direction like this. Now, these set of, I'll repeat, these set of electrons which are coming out uh, as a first loop or a first uh, group are referred to as early electrons and these electrons will move in the forward direction and some electrons will also get inside this cavity right and these electrons these electrons will move ahead in the forward direction in the uh, near to the rippler and since rippler is connected with negative voltage what this rippler will do is this rippler will repel these electrons and these electrons will come and bunch inside this cavity right so this is about the early electrons right now when i talk about early electrons the potential across the early electron here all of you please pay attention here this is the early electron that i am talking about at, at when early electrons are coming out the potential encountered is positive so the early electrons will take more time to reach the electron gap right so after some time this grid voltage across the grid space becomes negative so here this is zero volt now the electrons which are coming out are referred to as now E is when voltage RF voltage is positive. Now the set of electrons which are coming out are referred to as the reference electron ER. Right. So these reference electrons are the electrons which are coming when when the RF voltage across the grid is zero volt. 
So when the voltage across RF field here, it is zero volt. The electrons which come out are considered as reference electrons. Now here, something very interesting happens to these reference electrons. So give me just a minute and just connect my power cable. Am I audible? 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 Okay, thank you. Yes, so as I was saying, here we will have the RF voltage. So I can mark three points here. This is the point where I have. This is the point where this is the point where where I have positive voltage. This is the point where I have zero voltage, and this is the point where I have why I have negative voltage. So all of you listen carefully. The first set of electrons which come out are regarded as early electrons, and these electrons will move in this direction, and some go inside this cavity and some go near the rippler and this rippler will reflect these electrons and they come and settle inside this cavity right now this rf voltage will change and it will reach zero volt and the uh, when the rf voltage is at zero volt this i told you this is for positive when rf voltage reach zero volt the set of electrons that are coming out from the cathode is referred to as reference electrons. Now these reference electrons will come in this direction and then it will encounter much lesser repulsion, much lesser repulsion uh, because uh, since the voltage is zero, it will have much lesser acceleration. Thus, the amount of repulsion will be much lesser and after a few uh, moments, these electrons also will come and stay in this cavity right next this voltage will become negative this voltage will become negative and the next set of electrons which are going to come are regarded as el right now this is uh, interesting when uh, el comes out when el comes out this is coming with negative voltage this is coming with negative voltage so this these uh, late electrons these late electrons since it is coming with the negative voltage will encounter much greater amount of repulsion because the repeller is also at negative voltage so they will quickly get inside this cavity much faster than the early electrons are reference electron right so now this process of electrons coming 
uh, like this and coming back is referred to as acceleration and deacceleration, which is the concept of velocity modulation that I just discussed a couple of slides ago, right? When these electrons come like this and then reflect back and they get inside this cavity, they lose their energy. When they lose their energy, RF power will come out, right? So when electrons lose their energy, RF power is picked out and once these electrons uh, are accelerated and deaccelerated in a sustained manner, these electrons will help us in producing sustained oscillations or sustained RF oscillations. Okay. And here, here uh, T naught refers to the time taken for the electrons to cross. T naught refers to the time taken for the electrons to cross this point and then T1 is the time taken for the electrons to cross this point. As I already told you, electrons will go near the repeller and then it will come back. So the total time taken is referred to as T2. So T2 plus T1 will give you the time taken for the electrons to cross this uh, part of the grid and then come back uh, inside this cavity. Right. So that's about T0, T1 and T2. Okay. So as I've uh, told you, electron beam is injected from cathode. Uh, by doing velocity modulation uh, with reference to the cavity gap voltage and then all the electrons uh, are turned around by the rippler voltage because that is given with negative potential and uh, on their return journey the bunched electrons pass through the gap during the retardation phase of the alternating field the electrons give up their kinetic energy in the electromagnetic field of, uh, electromagnetic energy of the field in the cavity and then this grows and that leads to oscillator output okay so uh, this diagram again it illustrates the same thing that i just spoke about this is the early electron the early electrons are the group of electrons that is coming out when rf voltage is positive so these electrons will move further in the cavity and then they will encounter repulsion and then it will come to the cavity so this takes much greater time because it is going near the rippler and then it is coming back. So it get, takes much greater time. Next is the reference electrons that is ER. The reference electrons are the electrons that are coming out from the filament when the RF voltage is zero, right? And this will experience much lesser repulsion as compared to early electrons. And then when the voltage becomes negative, the electrons group of electrons that are coming out are referred to as late electrons and this will encounter much greater uh, repulsion and then they will reach the uh, bunching point uh, much faster than the earlier two set of electrons okay now here the point that you should uh, note down is the time taken for the reference electron which will have almost uh, which will have much lesser repulsion as compared to early electron is considered as T naught. This is T naught. And if you look at the grid voltage timing with that of T naught here, this is the zero point and this is the peak time. So from here to here, here to here, the time period is how much? It is three by fourth. It is three by fourth. Therefore, we can say that T naught is equal is taking three fourth of the time period before bunching begins depending on the voltage connected to the rest uh, the repeller and cavity the bunching of electrons may vary this is uh, maybe regarded as resonance frequency fr1 if i vary the voltage across the repeller uh, and the cavity uh, and the uh, anode cavity the voltage will change the same is shown here i want you to please pay attention here this is the cavity voltage and these are the early electrons ee so these early electrons will move inside the cavity first and then after some time because of the presence of rippler voltage they will uh, experience repulsion and then it will uh, go inside the cavity next set of electrons are the reference electrons er or e naught and then those electrons will come out and then after some repulsion that will go inside the cavity and then the last set of electrons are late electrons el they will experience uh, uh, the repulsion from the rippler and then they also go and accumulate here right and if you look at the time taken for this reference electron 
before uh, bunching it is considered as t not okay and if i uh, look at the first bunching this is the first bunching from here to here it is the first bunching so from here to here the time taken is 3/4 right so this is 3/4 this is the second bunching point if i call this as frequency this is fr1 and this is fr2 so if i want to operate at fr1 my bunching time taken is 3 by 4 if i want to operate at fr2 my bunching time taken is 1 3 by 4 so depending on whether i am operating at fr1 or fr2 i have modes where n is equal to 0 n is equal to 1 and so on right so these modes indicate where are my uh, resonance frequency points okay and for larger power uh, transmission uh, the uh, preferred resonance frequency point is f fr1 but depending on our application we may go for fr1 or fr2 or mode 0 mode 1 or mode 2 application and as i've told you the bunching time this bunching of these electrons depends on the voltage connected to the rippler and the distance between the uh, grid plate that is l so here from here to here what is the distance this is the rippler space so depending on that distance uh, we will have bunching time okay so this is another diagram showing the same uh, early electrons then reference electrons and late electrons you can see early electrons are the electrons when the grid voltage is positive reference electrons are when the voltage is negative and then late electrons are when the voltage is negative right so depending on rippler voltage and the distance and also the voltage connected to the uh, anode cavity the bunching time will vary right so depending on whether the bunching is happening in the first uh, time slot or the second time slot we have fr1 fr2 and so on and similarly modes mode 0 mode 1 and so on okay so these are the, the same modes that i Talked about mode A, mode B, mode C, or mode zero, mode one, and mode two. So this is three by fourth time. This is one three by fourth time. Okay. So here, if n is equal to zero, it will be zero plus three by four into t. Okay. And uh, depending on our mode of operation, our power output will increase or decrease. Okay. So this is uh, the first mode, second mode. and third mode okay so depending on the application i'll be operating in mode 1 mode 2 mode 3 uh, and so on okay and this is the experimental setup that we have in the lab wherein you'll be using this is the klistron tube you'll be using klistron tube to produce oscillation so you will be uh, practically doing this and you will see the oscillations produced by the reflex klistron tube okay so that's it in uh, today's session in the next class we shall uh, look to solve uh, some uh, numericals and then we'll move on uh, with the next set of topics in this module okay uh, and uh, this week we will be uh, conducting uh, this experiment maybe on uh, wednesday or thursday we will let you know when we will be conducting the microwave uh, test bench experiment so you can come in phased manner and you can see the demo of this experiment this is also very much part of your adc lab experiment okay so that's it in today's session uh, i'll be uh, taking the uh, attendance uh, through google form i'll be sending sending the google form so Uh, today uh, since i have uh, i have connected through my mobile data i don't have too much data so i'll be uh, sharing the google form for your attendance please submit your attendance through google from next class onwards i'll be taking attendance as usual by calling your name okay so that's it if you have any doubts you can comment in the chat box or else i'll be sending the google uh, form link in your google classroom please uh, uh, submit your attendance through that google classroom okay thank you